Have you ever imagined creating an invention that, according to rumors, was forgotten by none other than Nikola Tesla? Well, today you will discover a fascinating, rare project that few in the world know about. Get ready, because this will challenge everything you knew until now. It all starts with the CD-ROM, that old disc that many people have at home, and a magnet with specific dimensions, 102 by 56 by 14 millimeters thick. To bring the device to life, we also used enameled copper wire, which is solderable and resistant to temperatures up to 155 degrees Celsius, the same type of wire used in transformers, motors, ignition coils, and small Arduino projects. For this project, about a meter and a half of wire will be enough. The trick here is to remove the protective enamel from the ends of the wire using heat, which allows electrical conduction at the connection points. Please take the opportunity to comment on where you are watching from, your city and your country. It's always amazing to see where this content is reaching, to meet who is part of this community, and of course this helps me to produce content that is increasingly aligned with you wherever you are in the world. Set aside approximately one and a half meters of this copper wire to use in the project. The function of the enameled copper wire is to be wound around the magnet, forming several turns. This winding is essential for the project to work. The copper wire is then carefully wound around the magnet, forming an electromagnetic coil. There are approximately 22 turns, always well organized, firm, and adjusted to ensure the effectiveness of the generated magnetic field. This winding must be done carefully, keeping the turns well aligned without overlapping or gaps to avoid loss of efficiency. The precision of this process is essential for the functioning of the device, as it directly influences the intensity of electromagnetic induction, a concept that Tesla mastered like few others and applied in several of his revolutionary inventions. Don't forget to remove the layer of enamel that covers the copper wire. To do this, use a lighter and heat it slightly until the varnish burns off, leaving the wire clean and ready to ensure good electrical conduction. Now it's time to use a simple object that almost everyone has at home, an aluminum can. The first step is to precisely mark the center of the bottom of the can, using a ruler, a compass, or any object that helps you find the exact spot, ensuring that the hole is well-centered so as not to compromise the alignment, symmetry, and final result of the piece we are building. Using a drill equipped with a stepped drill bit, I make a hole right at the marked location. This initial hole is essential to facilitate the next process. Then, I take a wet sandpaper, it can be a medium or fine grit sandpaper, and start to carefully wear down the entire edge of the bottom of the can. The goal is to loosen this part, which has a thicker, more resistant, and well-structured aluminum. This is exactly the piece we will use in the next step. The next step is to join the bottom of the can to the center of the CD-ROM, using hot glue to ensure a firm hold. Here, the aluminum of the can not only serves as a physical support, but also as a fundamental part of the circuit, helping to direct and enhance the flow of energy between the components. Now, an extremely useful and versatile material comes into play, thermal aluminum tape. This is a highly resistant metallic adhesive, capable of withstanding high temperatures without losing its properties. This tape is widely used in both industrial and domestic applications, especially in services involving thermal insulation, sealing, heat protection, and even thermal conduction. In addition to being heat resistant, it also has excellent adhesion to metal, plastic, and even irregular materials, ensuring a firm and long-lasting fixation. In our project, it plays a fundamental role, not only helping with the structure, but also contributing to electrical conduction and offering reinforcement in the assembly of components, ensuring efficiency, durability, and safety in the operation of the system. It is carefully cut into proportional pieces and applied around the CD-ROM, strategically positioned near the bottom of the aluminum can, but without covering this central area. This detail is extremely important as it allows the system to maintain different zones of electrical, thermal, and mechanical contact, ensuring the correct circulation of the current and optimizing conduction. In addition, 
This configuration directly contributes to improving the efficiency, stability, and overall performance of the invention, avoiding interference, energy losses and failures in the functioning of the components involved. To continue assembling our invention, we will use a telescopic antenna, one of those common on portable radios. The first step is to carefully remove it from the radio, simply by unscrewing the metal base that holds the antenna, ensuring that no part is damaged during this initial process. Next, we will use a coaxial splice connector, which will be carefully adapted to function as a structural support and also as an electrical connection interface for the antenna, ensuring both physical stability and efficiency in signal transmission and conduction within the system. Using wet sandpaper, which can be 60, 80, or 100 grit, we wear down one end of the connector. The goal here is to remove some of the outer metal until the central core, which is usually insulated, is exposed and released. This process should be done carefully, applying moderate pressure and constant movements on the sandpaper until the copper or aluminum core becomes accessible. Next, we take the base of the antenna, the same one that was fixed to the radio, and fit it directly into the part that was cut off from the coaxial connector. To ensure a permanent fixation, we apply solder paste to the joints of the parts. It aids in the soldering process, improving the adhesion of the tin and providing a more solid and reliable joint. With the soldering iron well heated, we melt the tin over the prepared area, definitively fixing the antenna base to the connector. Watch as the set takes shape, with a robust, efficient assembly ready for the next stage of the project. Now you will need to drill a hole in the CD-ROM. This hole can be drilled in any available area close to the location I am demonstrating in the video, as there is no exact point that needs to be followed. It depends a lot on the assembly and the space available in each situation. This hole will allow the fixing of a screw which will serve as structural support or an electrical connection point, depending on the project's needs. If possible, use a washer in the assembly, as it helps to better distribute the tightening pressure, ensuring greater stability and preventing damage to the CD-ROM material. To ensure a firm and secure hold, use an appropriate wrench or, if you don't have one, even pliers can do the job well. Finally, I apply a small spot of solder to the screw, Almost finishing the assembly process, we apply hot glue to the entire circumference of the magnet, carefully covering the entire area where the copper wires are wound. This glue serves to join and permanently fix two fundamental elements of the project, the magnet assembly with the wires and the CD-ROM, which is already covered with thermal aluminum tape, in addition to the aluminum disc cut from the can. On the opposite side of the CD-ROM, it will be necessary to enlarge the central hole using the heated tip of the iron. The antenna will be inserted exactly into the hole made in the bottom of the aluminum can, which is positioned in the center of the CD-ROM. It is extremely important to check that the diameter is correct, compatible with the coaxial adapter that we prepared earlier, the one that we cut and soldered during the previous steps. Once positioned, the antenna is firmly fixed using a nut, which is the main reason why it was necessary to increase the diameter of the central hole of the CD-ROM. One of the ends of the copper wire will be soldered to the soldering point where we join the antenna to the coaxial connector. The other end of the wire will be connected to the solder point previously applied to the screw. For the next step, we will use a coaxial antenna cable approximately two meters long. Using a suitable cutting tool, such as a pair of wire strippers or a precision utility knife, we will remove the outer protective layer from both ends of the cable. This outer cover has the function of protecting all internal layers against physical agents, humidity and wear, in addition to ensuring the durability and structural integrity of the cable. By removing this cover, we expose the shielding, an interwoven metal mesh that has the essential function of protecting the signal, blocking noise, electromagnetic interference and transmission losses. Just below the shield, we find the dielectric insulator, which is an insulating material responsible for keeping the central conductor properly separated from the shield, ensuring that there is no short circuit and allowing the signal to travel efficiently. Carefully, we separate approximately three centimeters of these layers so that the central conductor and the shield are exposed, ready to receive the installation of the compression connector. 
To permanently secure the entire assembly, which includes the magnet, the CD-ROM, and all the adaptations made, we will use a PVC elbow as a structural support. The first step is to drill a hole in the elbow with a diameter sufficient to allow the coaxial cable to pass through tightly without excessive slack. Then, pass the coaxial cable through the hole made in the elbow and install a compression connector on the end of the cable, ensuring that the fastening is firm, secure, and of high quality. If, after installation, there is any excess of the central copper wire of the coaxial, carefully remove this excess using cutting pliers, taking care not to leave the wire too long. After preparing the cable, connect it directly to the coaxial connector that was previously soldered to the base of the telescopic antenna, ensuring a firm, stable, and functional connection. Next, attach the PVC elbow to the bottom of the CD-ROM using hot glue. This will provide a sturdy, well-aligned structure to support the assembly. Finally, we will use a piece of wood approximately 12 centimeters long, which will act as the support base for the entire device. Fix the PVC elbow to this wooden base, also using hot glue or another suitable adhesive, ensuring stability. The telescopic antenna can be adjusted to the desired height as needed. With the entire device finished, the next step is simple. Connect the coaxial cable directly to the antenna input on your television. Then, access the TV menu and start the automatic search for channels available in your region. If you are not yet a subscriber, take this opportunity to join our community. Sign up now and stay up to date with all the news, tips, and exclusive content we have prepared for you. This way, you will not miss any new videos, and you will also help us to grow and bring you more and more quality information. Don't waste time, click the subscribe button, and be part of this journey with us. It is clear that, from this project, we have built a functional TV antenna using simple materials easily found at home. The magnet, on which we wind a coil of copper wire, works as an electromagnetic coil, capable of helping to convert the high-frequency signal captured by the antenna into a lower-frequency signal, which the TV can interpret. Aluminum, both the aluminum in the bottom of the can and the aluminum thermal tape, plays a fundamental role in the antenna's performance. It acts as a reflector and director of electromagnetic waves, optimizing the reception of TV signals. Although aluminum does not conduct as well as copper, it is absolutely efficient for radio and television applications, due to the nature of the waves that operate in this frequency range. Imagine the satisfaction of showing this working invention to your neighbors, friends, or family. It's truly amazing to see how creativity, combined with basic electronic principles, can produce surprising results. Furthermore, this project highlights how possible it is, with creativity and basic knowledge, to transform simple everyday objects into a practical, economical, and sustainable solution. If this content was useful to you, don't forget to share it with your friends, family, and on your social networks. Thank you very much for following along, and we'll see you in the next video with more projects, tips, and creative solutions for you.